This massive tidal turbine is about to be activated so it can start supplying power to thousands of homes in the United Kingdom. The idea of harnessing power from oceans and tides isn't exactly new. Depending on how you look at it, it's really been going on for centuries. Your basic water wheel uses the force of flowing water to generate power. But what I want to talk about today is a little more powerful than that. This is the O2, and the company behind it calls it the most powerful tidal turbine in the world. It was designed and built by a Scottish engineering firm called Orbital. The O2 is a floating turbine about the size of a 747. It's 74 meters long with arms that reach 18 meters below the surface. The O2 weighs in at about 680 tons, and those rotors are 20 meters each, sweeping an area more than 600 square meters. Orbital just delivered the first O2 to the Orkney Islands, which sit off the northeast coast of Scotland. If Orkney sounds familiar, you may have caught my video on Microsoft's underwater data center. That project also happened in these same waters, and that's not a coincidence. And Orkney's blessed with some of the biggest, strongest tidal streams in the world, um, so it's a pretty good proving ground. It's a pretty hostile sea that surrounds it. That is Orbital CEO, Andrew Scott. He says the O2 can generate enough clean energy to power around 2,000 homes. So let's look at how it works. The main tube structure floats on the surface and is moored by an anchoring system. Inside that, you'll find most of the electrical equipment. At the end of those legs I mentioned earlier are the rotors, which are pushed by the force of the tides to generate power. And the blades can be reversed in pitch in between tide cycles. That means they can generate power whichever way the tide is moving. The produced power is sent through massive cables back to shore and into the grid. So what about maintaining those underwater cells? This is where the O2 design becomes really cost efficient. There's kind of a rule of thumb generally in offshore engineering. If doing a job onshore costs a dollar, it'll cost you maybe a hundred dollars to do it offshore at the surface. And then it will probably cost you $10,000 to do it at the bottom of the seabed. And that is why those legs are built on a hinge so they can be brought up to the surface. That way, they don't have to send divers down to do any needed repairs. Deploying the O2 is pretty simple as well. Scott says it can be towed to its site by simple small tugboats, which are relatively inexpensive. So once the anchors and the mooring lines are in place and the cables um, being laid, and again, that can be done fairly simply and cheaply, is that we can, I always kick myself for using the word just, it's never quite that simple, but effectively, uh, we can just throw the turbine onto site, connect it to its moorings, connect it to its grids, and away it goes. So let's talk about the advantages of using tidal streams to generate electricity. Tides are packed with tons of potential energy. Some tidal streams are as much as 40 or 50 meters deep. Seawater is over 800 times the density of air. So, you know, moving water at four meters a second is massively energy dense. And because there's so much energy in such a small space, that's why the turbine blades can be so much smaller than the ones you'd find on a typical wind turbine. Another major benefit is that tides are predictable. Unlike solar and wind power, tidal streams aren't affected by the elements. As long as the moon is up in the sky, we know exactly how strong a tide will be at any given time. And if you're asking, how do we know this tech works? Well, Orbital has already proven it. The company successfully tested its prototype model in the Orkney Islands a few years ago. As exciting as this project is, Scott admits that it's not going to be that silver bullet to solve the energy crisis and solve climate change. He says that the O2 is designed to work in conjunction to complement things like solar power and wind power. So if you think that the O2 can be a viable solution to produce clean, renewable energy, drop a wave in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Andy Altman, and I'll see you in the future.